Hello everyone. Here we talk about some business applications where simple interest is applied. Charge reviews. Charge reviews are popular short-term and low-risk securities issued by the federal government of Canada every Thursday with maturity term of a number of days that is a multiple of seven. From here, you should understand the charge review. Is issued only by government, and the term for charge review normally counted by weeks. So that's why the days of the material term is the number of multiple seven. Charge reviews are issued in denominations or face values of thousand dollar, five thousand dollar, twenty five thousand dollar, hundred thousand dollar, and a million dollar. The face value of a T bill is the amount that government guarantees it will pay on the maturity date. So from here, you should clearly understand the face value on charge review is mature value. That is how much money you can cash in at the end if you are holding a charge review. So in that case, the price for charge review would be lower than the face value. So the price being calculated based on the market interest rate situation, that is normally being said yield. So when government issue the charge bill, they have the interest rate being yield. The government announced, if after issue time before mature any time, if the charge bill being traded in the market, and that would follow the interest rate at that moment, the market situation. To determine a purchasing price of a charge review, you need to discount the face value to the date of the sale at an interest rate that is determined by the market condition. So that's what we just said. Calculating the price of charge review is always discounting from the material value based on the market interest rate situation. So the present value is always applied. Example one: An investment dealer bought a 91-day Canada T bill to yield an annual rate of return of 4.21 percent. Part A: What was the price paid by the investment dealer for a charge review with a face value $100,000? So here clearly we have material value one hundred thousand dollar and the yield interest rate four point two one percent, and we have the term ninety one day. Put them all in together. In the present value formula properly, we come out of the price ninety eight thousand nine hundred sixty one dollar twenty nine cents. Part B. The investment dealer resold the hundred thousand dollar treasury bill on the same day to an investor to yield four point zero six percent. Here you may need to understand the background. The treasury bill being issued by government, but they have limited quantity. So probably in the short time, if it is a hot investment and being sold out. So in that case, some investor, if they really want to get it, they may have to buy from the other investor. So in that case, we understand the situation on the same day. An investor holding the treasury bill and sell it to another one. Of course, they are going to yield different interest rate. So we have exactly same format for part B. Only the interest rate different. Turn out that the price would be ninety eight thousand nine hundred ninety seven dollar ninety two cents. So the original investor just turned over, made a little money. Paying price and sell it at different price. How much money this person made? That is the difference. Thirty-six dollar sixty-three cents. Example two: An investor purchased two hundred fifty thousand dollars three hundred sixty-four day charge review, three hundred fifteen days before maturity to yield three point three eight percent. 
He sold the Treasury bill 120 days later to yield 3.72 percent. Part A: How much did the investor pay for the Treasury bill? We should understand the 364-day Treasury bill is the term of the Treasury bill, is the nature of this T bill, but is not the time the investor bought in. So the investor bought this Treasury bill 315 days before maturity. So when we try to figure out the price, it has nothing to do with 364. Similarly, we use the present value formula to calculate the price. Here, 315 is applied, and 303.38% 303, uh, 3 interest rate is applied here. Turn out the price is 242914.23. Part B. For how much did the investor sell? the T bill. Exactly same format. We need to understand when the T bill was sold, how much time until the mature time. So the first investor bought in 315 days before mature day and he hold it 120 days. So the leftover for the buyer would be the difference, 315 minus 120, give us 195 days. So we put that information in the formula properly. Here, of course, different interest rates, 3.72 is applied. We turn out that the price being sold as 2451-28.33. So the difference would be the profit the investor made and it can also be called interest and the first number the p1 that's the purchasing price could be considered as principal so in that case we can answer part c what a rate of return did the investor realize so on the top, we calculate the difference, that's the interest, and then divide by principal, divide by the time period. He's holding the treasury bill 120 days, that's what he experienced. Give us the answer, 2.77%. Here's another application, lines of credit. A line of credit is a pre-approved loan agreement between a financial institution and a borrower. The borrower may withdraw money up to an agreed maximum. At any time, interest is charged only on the amount withdrawn from the line of credit. A minimum repayment may be required each month. The borrower may repay any additional amount at any time without further penalty. With this background description we understand for line credit so you have certain issue you are offered some credit you can use if you have negative balance on this line credit account and you will be charged interest if you have positive balance and you will earn some interest of course the interest rate being different level. And you do have a limit, which is the maximum credit being offered. So if you exceed that limit, so that exceeding part, that means your negative balance exceeding that part, that's called overdraft. The part exceeding the limit will be charged a higher rate of interest. So that's a basic understanding about the line credit. Later we are going to see Example about credit card. Credit card normally offered one month credit period. So you can do the regular shopping with the credit card. If you pay the bill within the credit period, you won't be charged any interest. But there is a situation called a cash advance. So if you use this credit card, take out the cash, that would be considered as a loan directly. 
So at the moment, you pick up the cash, and you will be charged interest from there right away. So this is a little bit different from your regular shopping. Regular shopping, you can use the credit card, buy things, and you pay the bill after within the credit period, and you won't get charged. But if you take cash, you will be charged right away. Example three: You have applied for and received the credit card. The interest rate charged is eighteen point nine percent per annum. You note the following transactions for the month of September. On September six, purchased textbooks and supplies for a total of two hundred fifty dollar. On September tenth, withdraw hundred dollar as cash advance through your credit card. September thirtieth, received the credit card statement showing a minimum balance owing of twenty five dollar. A payment date of October ten is stated on the statement. Part A: Calculate the amount of interest charged on the cash advance for September tenth until end of September, inclusive. So here is the situation: cash advance would be charged the interest right away. So the cash advance hundred dollar being taken. From September ten to end of September, inclusive would be considered as twenty-one days, including the last day. So twenty-one days for a hundred dollar being charged eighteen point nine percent interest rate, turn out one dollar nine cents. Part B, you decide to pay the amount owing in full on October first. How much must you pay? So in that case, keep that in mind. Your due date October ten. So before the due date, you do not have to pay interest on the regular purchasing two hundred fifty dollar. So in that case, all you need to pay two hundred fifty dollar and a hundred dollar you borrowed, return it, and plus. One dollar nine cents interest. So the total payment on October first should be three hundred fifty-one dollar nine cents. Part C. Instead of paying the full amount, you decide only pay the minimum twenty-five dollar. So if you pay the minimum twenty-five dollar, so the credit card agreement still allow you to use credit card, but. You will have debt on the credit card. Leftover debt will be charged the high interest rate. So in that case, your leftover debt would be three hundred twenty-six dollar nine cents. If you do not have any further transaction in October, and then for October months, let's see how much will be. So you are going to have three hundred twenty-six dollar. That's your principal, and based on this principal, you generate another thirty-one days interest, give you the new interest of five dollar twenty-three cents. Together, you are going to owe three hundred thirty-one dollar thirty-two cents. So your debt is simply growing. Example four. Here we have a line credit situation. We give you the activity list on February. So we just simply follow this activity form to answer the question. Before that, we need to understand the basic policy for this line credit. So the limit for this line credit one thousand dollars. For any positive balance, you receive the interest at the interest rate one point five percent. For any negative balance, you pay the interest at seven percent. For overdraft, that is the part exceed one thousand dollar limit, 
and then you're going to be charged the 18% interest rate. When you have overdraft that happen, you also need to pay the service charge, $5 fee. So let's answer the following question. The amount of interest earned, that's based on the positive balance. The amount of interest charged, that's based on the regular negative balance within the limit. The amount of interest charged on overdraft, we listed this part separate because they are going to be charged a different interest rate. We have to calculate them separately. The amount of service charge, and then the amount of balance for the February. We still have this table here, and we followed the part A. So we check this table, check all the positive balance we can see. So we have $950 positive balance, $710 positive balance, and here $950 from February 10 to February 16. So we go over six days and the $710 from February 16 to February 20. It stays four days. So that's how we calculate the interest. So we have the principal, we have the interest rate, and we have the time period. So that's the interest being earned. This interest rate, 1.5%. Part B, for the negative part, so we put them together, 35 cents is the interest gained. Part B for the negative part. So we check all the negative balance. Especially second one, we can see negative $1,100. And here we only count $1,000. That's the regular limit. For another extra $100, we call the overdraft, which is exceeded the limit. So that part being charged the higher interest rate. So here we only calculate the regular range, $1,000. And then we have some other negative number, 290, 370, and 520. For each one, we have the dates clearly listed. So we calculate them separately, and then add them together, give us the interest rate being charged on the regular negative balance, $2.16. And then we calculate the overdraft part. We have $1,000 overdraft, only happened once, and being charged 18%. So for this part, we turn out 30 cents interest. Overdraft happened only once. The service charge is $5. Put them all together for February. Check the last number, negative 520. We gain 35 cents for this month, and we are charged the regular interest on negative balance, $2.16, and we are charged the 30 cents for overdraft, and we charge the $5 for service. So total balance for move on next month, you're going to see this one on the top. That's the balance, negative $527.11. So this is a typical example about the line credit, how we manage this finance situation. See you next time.